Hey, we give you the facts. It's not what you think. Popeye News Link. Young King. One yard. Bless. Good morning, Popeye. Grandma watch Popeye's every morning and every night. Greetings. Greetings, viewers and subscribers. So when we start today's journey, we are still in the parish of Westmoreland. We are heading towards the parish of Hanover. So when we start today's journey, although the stories are sad, sit back. Relax and enjoy the view. So, today, I'm going to be dropping two videos because, trust me, the mayhem turn up big time. In the next video that I'm going to be dropping, three men were killed in the parish of Westmoreland. This resulted from three different incidents. A female is also battling for life in hospital. Over in Montego Bay, a 50-year-old raper bull was caught in the act by the police. All those plus more stories will be coming up in the next video. It's coming up later, so stand by for that. But in the news for now, that guy on your screen, his name is Fernando Dixon. This September 4, Fernando, he'll be celebrating his 25th birthday for about the past five years. He has been a member of the Jamaica Defence Force. He is living at 2 East, Greater Portmore in the parish of St. Catherine. The allegations are that JDF soldier Fernando Dixon, he is the stepbrother of a young girl. She celebrated her 14th birthday in January of this year. It is said that Fernando, he was living with this young girl and her family and it is alleged that early last year when she was just 13 years old fernando he held her down and did you know what with her it is said that the young girl's family they later relocated and fernando he went to their home where he did it again on more than one occasion it is said that fernando he started hiding and giving this teenager money to do all kind of things it is said that they met on many occasions and them go do it the police they became aware of what was happening and they commenced an investigation as a result of this investigation jdf soldier fernando dixon he was arrested and charged for one r a p e two Sexual intercourse with a person under the age of 16 years old. And three, sexual grooming. So, all because of young meat. J.D. Soldier, Fernando Dixon. He might end up in prison as well as end up losing his job as a J.D.F. Soldier. Just like that. Now, this next incident, it took place early Wednesday morning. June 28, about 1 o'clock, it took place along the East Avenue Main Road in Lucy, in the parish of Hanover. We are learning that a young man, his name is Ryan Robinson, he is 18 years old and he was said to be a bike taxi operator. He lived at Prosper District in the Lucy area in the parish of Hanover. We are told that Ryan, he was riding that white suzuki access motorcycle along the main road a female was a pillion on the bike on reaching a certain section along the roadway it is said that ryan he rode into a patrol as a result ryan he ended up losing control of the bike the bike then diverted into the grass verge on the opposite side of the road and ryan he was thrown from the bike he fell along the roadway and he received injuries to his head. It is suspected that Ryan, he died on the spot. The female passenger, we are told that she received some minor injuries to her knees. Sad indeed. Boy, may I tell you about them patrol you know. Sad indeed. This next incident, it took place early yesterday morning. Thursday, June 29, about 2 o'clock. It took place at a place named Pigeon Shoot in the Portmore area of St. Catherine. We are learning that a man, 
He's called OJ. He's said to be in his late 20s. He's living at a shack in the Pigeon Shoot area. Early yesterday morning, OJ, he was in his shack when two hoodlums kicked off the door and entered. One of the hoodlums, he was armed with a handgun. The hoodlums, they instructed OJ to lay down on the floor. Apparently, their plans was to execute OJ. We are told that OJ, he pretended like he was going to lay down, but he ran out of the shack. The hoodlum, he opened a barrage of gunshots at OJ. One of the bullets hit him on his right hand. The hoodlums, they then ran away, making good their escape. The police, they were called and they rushed OJ to a nearby hospital where he was treated. We are told that when this crime scene was processed, a number of 9mm pen shells were recovered from the scene. The mayhem. Now, listen to this. Listen carefully. Last night, Thursday, June 29, about some minutes after 7 o'clock, a Toyota Costa bus, which operates as a public passenger vehicle. It stopped and picked up two guys at the Mega Mart bus stop in Gregory Park in Portmore. Remember now, bus conductors work on these buses. On reaching in the vicinity of Watson Grove along the Gregory Park main road, one of the two guys who just came on the bus, he requested a stop. The same guy, he attempted to grab the money out of the bus conductor's hand. The bus conductor pushed him away and the other guy, he was carrying a strap bag. We are learning that he pulled a gun from the strap bag and used it to hit the bus conductor under his right eye. He then pointed the gun at the bus conductor and threatened to kill him. The two hoodlums, they then proceeded to rob the bus conductor of over 17,000 Jamaican dollars and his Samsung Galaxy cell phone. The hoodlums, they then made good their escape. But keep listening because it's not done yet. Keep on listening. About 8.30 last night, over an hour after the two hoodlums robbed the bus conductor, a policeman, he was in a business place at Baptist Road in the same Gregory Park area when he heard a gunshot fired. The policeman, he looked out and he saw two guys walking very fast towards him. The policeman, he identified himself to them as a police and told them to stop. One of the guys pulled a gun from his waist and pointed it at the policeman. We are told that this alert policeman, he pulled his gun and opened gunfire at the hoodlums. The gun that the hoodlum had, it fell and both hoodlums, they ran away in separate directions. A phone also fell from one of them. The gun that fell from the hoodlum, it was retrieved by the policeman and it was found to be a black and silver browning 9mm pistol. It was affixed with a magazine containing 8 rounds of 9mm cartridges. The cell phone that fell from the hoodlum, it was found to be a Samsung Galaxy cellular phone. Now, <laughs> let me see if you are paying attention. What kind of phone did I say the hoodlum robbed from the bus conductor? Yes man, it was a Samsung Galaxy phone. Now, as it turned out, the phone that fell from the hoodlum was the same Samsung Galaxy phone that they robbed from the bus conductor earlier with the 17,000 Jamaican dollars. It was the same hoodlums who carried out that robbery. We are also learning that one, if not the two hoodlums were hit because blood spots were seen in the area. <laughs> Let's hope. Let's hope. Officer, job well done. Yeah, man, job well done. Now, in this next incident, we are learning that in the Chinatown Central Village area of St. Catherine, there is a gang known as Draggy Draggy Gang. The leader for that gang, he's known as Three Way, and we are told that he's in police custody. 
we are told that a guy, his name is Ryan Romario Minto, but he was popularly known as Boise. He was born on February 25. 1994 he is 29 years old and he was living in the windsor heights area of central village we are told that boise he was a member of the draggy draggy gang a guy popularly known as ak man he was also a member of the same gang but there was a falling out it is said that ak man he's now a member of a gang in the same area known as the elbow gang we are learning that earlier this week, either Sunday or Monday, there was an argument between AK Man and Boise and threats were heard on both sides. It is said that AK Man, he threatened to kill Boise and Boise, he threatened to kill AK Man. Well, on Wednesday morning, June 28, about 7.30, Boise, he was at home with other members of his family to include his mother and his siblings he was beside the house washing some clothes when hoodlums pounced they were armed with guns the hoodlums they opened gunfire at boise hitting him in his upper body boise fell to the ground and the hoodlums they made good their escape on foot in the area from all indication boise died on the spot the police were called and when they processed this crime scene, four 9mm spent shells were recovered from the scene. The mayhem. The me so let me ask you know something. <laughs> let me ask you know something. Have you hit on the love button as yet? If you have not yet done so, remember to hit on it. Also, if you are over here watching our videos and you have not yet subscribed, hit on the subscribe button as also. Hit on the notification bell, then click all, so that whenever we drop a new video, you will be the first to be notified. And remember, I'll be dropping another video later on. You're not going to want to miss it. Stand by for it. Now, in the final story for today, if you look on your screen, that list of Clarendon's most wanted hoodlums was released last year, August. The five persons on the list, they were all wanted for gun-related crimes, including that hoodlum on your screen. His name is Romain Murray, but he was popularly known as John Tom. He was born on April 15, 2001. The release from the police last year stated that John Tom's last known address is Comfort District in the Osborne store area of Clarendon. The release also stated that John Tom, he was wanted for shooting and wounding someone. The release also stated that he frequent the communities of Buckner, Comfort, Milk River, Osborne store and four parts all in the parish of Clarendon. No mention was made of Bamboo Drive at Greenwood in the parish of St. James. So, John Tom, he thought it was okay for him to go and hide out at Bamboo Drive in Greenwood, right beside the border of St. James and Trelawney. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, we are told that John Tom, he was now a hired hitman in the parish of St. James. Well, is one thing I know, you know. You see when intelligencers ready for work <laughs> in the Queen's language. You see when intelligencers are ready to work, a lot can happen. And people, remember me tell you, let me segue a bit. If the law abiding citizens of Jamaica want better for Jamaica, more persons will have to start being intelligencers and yes, yeah man. I've heard the stories. I have heard the stories. Persons are afraid to go to station and tell the police anything because you're afraid. Your name will go back out of the road. Not true. But guess what? Yeah, man, guess what? You don't have to go to any police station. Look on your screen and write off 
those numbers. You can send WhatsApp message to the JDF tip line. Let's save Jamaica. Become an intelligencer. So, back to John Tam. John Tam, he was wanted in Clarendon on gun-related charges, but him run go to Greenwood to step up his game in the crime world. But the intelligencers, they were at work, and the police, they received intelligence that John Tam was in the area. Yesterday afternoon, Thursday, June 29, about 2.30, a team of police officers, they went to the area in search of Jantam. The reports are that Jantam, he was spotted running from a yard with a gun in his hand. In less than 20 seconds, it was all over. Jantam, he was found clutching a pistol with 4.40 cartridges. He apparently died on the spot. Just like that. Another hoodlum was sent home. Intelligencers, big up on yourself. Officers, job well done. The mayhem continues. Blessed love, everybody. Tell a friend, for tell a friend, for tell a friend about Papa in News Link and PNL Blog TV. Like, subscribe, and share. Quick Silver Sin. Chiba, give me me country back.